Hi everybody, it's Julie. I'm here with household items. So I have I I am going to be using dryer sheets and I have wax paper. I also have some coffee dyed parchment paper that I'll be using later in the video as well. And so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with the dryer sheets. We are making page ideas and um, embellishment ideas. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna stretch out your dryer sheet. You probably actually want to, you know, when you, <laughs> and these are used. However, just so you know that when you pull them, you may get some fragrance out of them, okay? So I need, um, for this simple one, I need two pieces, okay? Oh no, actually, I only need one for this super simple one. So yeah, super simple. Um, we are going to use use a used dryer sheet and a paperback book that has great um, margin. I mean, it just is, it looks so good. Doesn't that look so good? And of course, um, you've seen me use this and it has over 200 pages. So I'll be able to do a hundred pages of things with this, but I also end up using it for smaller things. So for this, we're gonna want to go ahead and I'm gonna rip around the edge because that's how I choose to, um, to do this. And if I'm ripping into the words, that's okay because it's not meant to be red, but the other thing about using this homonym cinnamon antimonym book is um, there's probably no bad words, no bad sentences. Um, yeah, so oh, I probably wanted to be a little more careful on the side where the word was, but that's okay. Okay, so I have this. I'm gonna want two of them. Okay, but I'll, just for the sake of time, we're gonna try and make this video not so long. I um, will lay this down and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew around the edges. I sewed around and I left the top open. Now the really cool thing is, is that leaves this page that I can come back in and I can add a napkin on top of it. I can decorate on top of it. Um, and embellish it, um, but that is going to be awesome. So then, so I'm gonna do this to both sides. And then I'm gonna turn this over after I've sewn those on. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna see about adding a little pocket to the other side. Because this side, you're not really gonna be able to I mean, you could embellish it. Um, I, I found that fabric tack was the best thing for embellishing on there, and I'll show you that in a minute. So then I went ahead and I, I sewed around this, and so this is what I got. Okay. Okay, so I have two, two pieces of this where they're sewn on. And then I have a place behind here where I can add, um, I, think, I think everything I have over here is too big. <laughs> How about this? That might be, okay. And I have a little pocket behind, yep, too big too. Okay, the one thing about whatever you put in this pocket, you're probably gonna round the, wanna round the edges so that it makes it easier to get in there. Um, I'm sorry I didn't, I had the, the perfect thing. I had a page from, um, the Edwardian lady book 
but it's too big and I don't want to cut it down just so it'll fit in here. But I'll show you. You're going to, you're going to, whatever you put in here, it's going to show through a little bit and it's going to give you a backing here. Okay. And you can choose to not leave that open if you want to. Okay. But this is going to make a great page in my journal. And I have used the household item. I've used an old book, and um, so all I have to do is add my other two things. So this will go into my journal. Now, really quickly, I wanted to show you. This is the back of a um, paper pad, and I did coffee dye it, and I end up, I have all these things, and I, I'm going to go ahead and be, I'm going to be, I'm going to cut these out. And um, I think the bird one will fit right in that little pocket. So this will be um, 12 by 12 paper pad, okay? Um, your cover and your back of your paper pad count if you're using, uh, well, any 12 by 12 paper pad, okay? So it was a 12 by 12 paper pad. And that little guy is going to be able to go in here. Okay. So he doesn't count as part of my page. But doesn't it look cool in there? And it came from what would be trash. So there's dryer sheet page idea. Household dryer sheet page idea. Okay. So next, this is one I need two for, okay? So we are going to go ahead and we need to flatten out two that are, um, you know, the same size, especially if you're like at that place where you switched brands or something, you want to make sure that you have two pieces that are the same size. So for this one, I wanted the effect of snow okay so what I've done I've taken this I've gone ahead and I've sewn around here and here and I have it at just under the eight and a half inches okay so I sewed here and the thing I found but the dryer sheet gathered when it was sewing on my machine so I sewed across cut it cut the thread and then pulled it out so that it straightened it out and then I did this one I sewed across and then I pulled it out and um, and I'm telling you that because I know that there are some people that are brand new to sewing okay so um, if you have it and it starts gathering you go ahead cut your thread off leave space on your thread and then you can gently pull it and it'll unruff and unruffle and you'll see it'll take some of that thread over there so what I have now is I have this is um, <laughs> this is <laughs> been sewn so what I did next was I took my um, my glue okay uh, uh, I did I used the uh, glue stick and I came in and I added some glue stick okay remember I wanted this to look like snow so then I came in with some chunky glitter and I just went ahead and I chunky glittered right on top of that okay Then I went ahead and I went on this one and not as much, but a little. Okay. But remember they're sewn together though <laughs> when I was doing this. Okay. Um, and then I put the two together. Okay. And then I finished sewing it. And what happened was um, some of the glitter comes down to where the stitching is. Oh, darn, I don't want to. 
I'm going to have glitter everywhere. Um, and some of it moves around, but some of it stays on the where the glue stick is. So I have the shimmery look of snow. So imagine that this is sewn all the way around the outside. So the other thing that I wanted, and it's eight and a half by, um, it's smaller. Yeah, so <laughs> I hope. If it's not, I'll have to cut it down. Okay, so the next thing I did was I took a dryer sheet and I made a little hill. Okay, so I made a little hill. And then I took fabric tack and I attached this little hill onto the stitching. And then I had another little hill. Okay, so it was um, in an L shape. It was here and across. Okay, and then I had another little hill and it came from this direction and it went across and I glued it here and here. So here and here. So you have glue on the first one there and there, glue on the second one like that. Then I took the glue stick and I put glue on this one. I put a paper under it, sorry. Okay, so I put a paper under this. It's, it's already glued down and I put a paper under it. Then I took the glue stick and I put glue on here and I added just a little bit of the um, glitter on that. And then I tapped it down and I moved it, moved it around a little bit so that there was glitter all in there. Then I grabbed one last little piece and it came across this way again. Okay. And I, and I had to pull this out. Okay. Now on the one that I made, a lot of the glitter got covered by my little, my last little mound. What I've done here is I've created a pocket. I, it's sparkly. It's sparkly up in here. This is going to be a tip in page in my journal. Um, and then this one is going to go into, I need to, I don't want to sew this yet because I need to see what the dimensions are on my pink Christmas journal that I'm making. And I'm going to use that in my pink Christmas journal. But let me show you how it turned out. Okay, so this is my little, my little goodie here. And um, I do think I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit. Um, but that's fine. And it is a home for my polar bears. Okay. So it is a home for my polar bears. This one looks like Olive. <laughs> and this is going to be a tip in. And again, I may have to cut it down or sew it down to fit into my um, journal. Um, because I forgot to think of those measurements. But this is what I have. I have a s sparkly snowy little goodie here okay and probably when I go ahead and I sew this I will go ahead and sew something on the back here um, so that it has uh, like a tuck space is probably what I'll put but there we go this will go in as a tip in and it is going in my um, my challenge journal this month. So remember, this was made with the napkins. I don't know if you've seen that video yet, but this was made with the napkins. And so there we go. Home for my polar bears out of dryer sheets and my little snowbank. And you see the glittery in the snowbank and you see the glittery just up here, just a little bit, just a little bit. Some of it's come down here and you can always go ahead and turn it over and shake it so some more of the glitter comes to the top. It does become a little shaker. Okay? So. Yeah. A snowbank out of 
<laughs> but there's a, there's a page idea, a tip in page idea. Okay. Now, another thing that you can do with your dryer sheets is you can go ahead and cut or rip. And of course, you know me, I, I prefer to rip everything. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just come down along here and get myself a straight, try and get a straight line. This time I am um, going at the length of, it's hard to do too, okay? So this is what I've got. And so another thing that I like to do with dryer sheets is to have an edge, okay? A ruffly edge. And the thing about this is um, to make it so that it's easy to put into your your um, in your, into your journal, I like to do what I call a ready edge. And that's where we take a strip of paper and we actually attach our ruffle to the strip of paper. Now it can be a much thinner strip of paper so that you see more ruffly. Okay. And then I like to sew this on. You can do it with glue. Um, it is messy but it does work, okay? And um, so taking your dryer sheet and putting it on like that. And so this was a full piece of dryer sheet and I added it to the paper with my sewing machine. And then something I like to do is to come back in and add some color and you can do that with a thinner strip of paper and go ahead and sew that down. And so that's what I did here. Okay. And you've got paper back here. So you can use any of your paper to paper glue to be able to go ahead and now add that into your journal. Okay. So paper ruffle or a dryer sheet ruffle. Um, you can also do this with cheesecloth, which is another household item. And um, again, you can do it with your sewing machine or with um, with glue. Okay, I'm just noticing that this didn't get <laughs> didn't get shut. We don't want it to end up all over the place. Okay, so another thing that like I'd like to do is to use the dryer sheet as the background for for something. So, oh, I printed some of the mushroom kit. So this is the new mushroom kit. Um, side by side, these are side by side pages. This is the inside of a mushroom that, that grew in our yard several years ago. Cigarette card. <laughs> Upside down again. Okay. Do you know the difference between a toadstool and a mushroom? So very eclectic. We've got photographs. We've got antique images. We have a book article about, about the mushroom. These could be covers. Got a little elf guy in that one. And this is what I was looking for was these little images. <laughs> that would be the last page. <laughs> Sorry about that. So that is some of the, um, the mushroom digital kit. Let's see. I think I want to use that one right there. Okay. So I'm going to. I know, I'm cutting it out. You're, you're shocked. I am too. 
but you'll notice I'm I'm just not a straight cutter which is why I prefer to rip go over a little bit more okay so um, using the dryer sheet as a backing is another thing that I like to do. Is this one big enough? It is if I'm careful. Okay, if I come over here, pull that off. Come across the bottom. Okay. Come across the side. <laughs> we might have to do an extra video this week um, because I don't know if I I don't know if there's enough days left in the month to get all my videos up. Okay, so say we're doing that. I have some paint chips that I picked up and I already have ready to go into my journal. That one's called Maple Glaze, Blazing Autumn, Amber Brew, and Colorful Leaves. I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go with this one and I'm gonna put it up here high on it. Okay, and I did already back them with the lined note paper. I did that while I was watching a video. Okay, we're going to use Fabric Tac because I know that will hold a dryer sheet. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little puddle. Put it down. Okay, and then I'll come in, put glue on this, and put that down. So that gives us the raggedy edge. Now, um, I didn't have any coffee dyed um, dryer sheets, but what I usually do is we only have a little bit of coffee left at the end of the day, just a little bit. And I'll take a bunch, you know, if I have a few coffee, or coffee, if I have a few dryer sheets, I'll take and put those in a cup with the leftover coffee and coffee dye them. And they turn out really, really cool. But there you go, adding dryer sheet as a backing. I love it. This was the one that I made um, for my example and I just um, sewed that one on okay and of course we can go ahead and you know continue to make it fit if <laughs> if it bothers you so I did just get a notification um, you know I'm making this video on Thursday um, the wedding was delivered, so I know some of you actually helped me and prayed that the flowers would get there because I was I was worried because the last one took a trip um, further than it was supposed to go and then had to go back, and uh, it's very stressful. So, and originally I was going to take them there, but there was just um, the, the day that I could go they would not be there and I wouldn't even get to see my grandkids. So um, it, I was like, okay, so we'll get it done and mail it. But there we go. Isn't that so pretty? I love it. So dryer sheet, we did a backing, we did a ruffle, we did snow, snow ideas. So you can just use this idea. You don't have to use the whole idea. This was something I actually wanted for my, my journal that I'm working on and the side-by-side -side page here. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to wax paper. 
So, um, let's get this out of the way. And we will start with, I have this thing of wax paper and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull off two sheets, oh, well, it's okay, I have to, <laughs> darn. I haven't had any trouble with this, but I have been doing it in the air, not on the desk. I wonder if that makes a difference. Oh, could use that there. No, you can't. That doesn't work. Oh, well. Anyway, I was planning to use the, the cutter anyway. So using the cutter um, works really well with this. We're going to go ahead and put the straight side up against our cutter, obviously, right? <laughs> and then I have this page, that piece will come over here and There we go. We we'll have that piece. We'll save those. Okay. So for this um, for this first one, let's see how wide it is. It's about nine inches. Okay. Just so you know, we're gonna put that one up there, and let's go ahead and cut this one. So waxed paper. I was going to do foil, um, but I didn't have time. I was going to do the hot glue designs using a stencil and then putting your foil over it and then using your really the pretty waxes and stuff. Um, but there won't be time. So we'll do that another day. Okay. So I want, there's two sides. One side is uh, slick and the other side is a little not as slick. And I want, because these are going in journals that may have um, some um, forgot what I was going to say. My mother-in-law would say, oh, then it was a lie. <laughs> My ex-mother-in-law. Um, she was awesome. Okay, so we are going to go ahead and we are going to start by um, folding this one over. And I want to get a five inch, basically, um, piece inside here okay so come down to seven okay so we went seven to twelve that gave us five we can we should be able to there we go okay so I have this is five inches on the inside um, I'm gonna go ahead and from down here, I'm going to cut across, well, at about an inch. Okay, so if I line this up over here, use my lines, and come over here, I need to be about a quarter of an inch on the inside here. And I'll just cut up to here. And then we'll just come in and cut in an angle. And cut in an angle. Okay. Save those. We'll go ahead and flip this one up. 
fold it. And that way we've got it ready by already having the fold before we have any glue or anything going on. We already have that, okay? We're gonna come up here Okay, and we need to cut a little off. Okay, so you're just you're gonna check and make sure that your that your your cut is out of the way of the fold down here. Okay, we're ready. We're ready. So what I am gonna do is I used the Cosmic Shimmer glue from Spectrum Art Creations. And I am putting glue on the edge or close to the edge here and close to the edge here. And then a swirly. Okay. And close it. And this glue is supposed to dry clear, so I'm counting on it. Okay, and then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to swirly, swirl, 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 and I'm going to go across. Okay, there we go. Now, um, depending on the size of your journal or your project, you can go ahead and cut this off. I wanted to use decorative scissors. Um, I have to wait till the glue dries to use the decorative scissors. Okay, so let me show you. This is what I did. And you can see what happened with the, because I had glue on my scissors. It did dry clear and you have a wax paper glassine bag ready for your journal. Now this size, you could also, it could be a page. You could fold it here and, and then make like this be a po top pocket and this one could be a side pocket. So I'm just gonna cut this so that it, but this is ready and I'm gonna leave it long like this and knowing that I can cut it down later so making several of these at one time and having them ready for your journal i think would be a really great idea so another thing about this is i want to add a napkin napkins on the the glassine and the tracing paper and all those things is really cool i guess i should rip this I ripped it the rest of the way around. Okay. I found by trial and error, where did, where did my trial go? Okay, so I um, put a napkin on this paper and where the glue is, it has stayed down. Okay, it's, I'm ripping it, but, but it stayed down. So I was pretty excited about that. And I was like, I have these owls that I still want in my, um, in my journal. My, well, it'll go in one of the journals that we're making right now. We've got several. Okay, so I'll make sure that there's glue everywhere that the, that the, the owl the owls, because we've got two here. Okay. And with that moon, he could even go for Halloween, huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I saw... Okay, so for my challenge, I have household, and so far I also have napkin. Okay, 
So if I use this as my embellishment um, for my challenge journal for September for the Something Special Junk Journal Challenge. It's a stash buster challenge. There you go. I love it. So we made a bag. That was our page or a page idea. And from our other one, we are going to go ahead and we're going to fold it up. Okay, make sure that I want the slick, shiny side on the inside. I want, I personally, like I said, I want the matte side on the outside. So we're going to do that. We're going to fold this over. This is the easiest page idea. Um, if you have tracing paper that is too big to just be put into your journal for noisy paper, this is how I put, I have a bunch from my dad that is like nine, it's weird, it's like nine and a half by 13 inches or something crazy like that. Um, this is how I'm able to use it. And then what I did was I go ahead and stitch around the outside. It gives me two really pretty pockets. And um, I went ahead and I had ripped the outside edges because I actually, um, mine was bigger than that one. And I love the way the zigzag grabbed and ripped that. So giving you a different texture, but adding some noisy paper. Yes, I love noisy paper. Adding some noisy paper to my journal. And then, of course, if you want, you can go ahead and put the napkin on there. You can add a pocket to one side. But also, remember, you're going to be able to see through this. So, um, you know, always looking for places that we can put some of the really pretty things that we have to add. So like this, or I, I played in the snarky stuff yesterday. So if you have a really cool little tag that you made, it's probably too big for it, but And go ahead and put it in there and you're going to be able to see it okay so yeah so watch for snarky snarky stuff that is my pink october journal <laughs> that i'm making okay so that page and we'll put it under the owls since they're still drying okay so you have leftovers. Okay, you have leftovers. So again, with your sewing machine, this one is the, oh my gosh, this one is so easy. So going ahead and getting my paper for underneath. Um, for me, I, I do the paper, like I said, because I like I just did a whole row. I just sewed and sewed while I was listening to um, a thing. And um, so I, I just kept sewing these in a row, one right after the other. So you can just put this on and then just start wrinkling it. That's how I, I do it. As it's feeding through the sew machine, I just wrinkle it and crinkle it on this one, okay? The other, I go ahead and usually fold it, but then you get this awesome, awesome, awesomeness, okay? So, and again, it has the wrinkly and crinkly effect. And so, there's that. And I'll, where did I put the little ones? The little ones. I had some little tiny ones. I lost them. <laughs> That's the dryer sheet. Okay, well this is all my extras. After I take out what is going in either, either one of the journals. Well I have, these are with the, um, the other 
with the parchment paper, the coffee dyed parchment paper. Okay, so just having them and having them ready. They'll be ready for whatever. <laughs> okay, and um, so the pieces that I just cut off, I'm going to put these right over by the saw machine. Don't lose, don't lose that. Put these pieces over by the saw machine and they're going to become waxy ruffles. Okay, and so that is the wax paper ideas. And now we have the coffee dyed parchment paper. And I don't have very much of it left because I was playing with it. Um, so with this, you can do the same thing. You can do the pocket and you can do the um, pocket page with this. So we're going to go ahead and grab some ink. And I think we'll just, will that fit on there? Barely, 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 but that's okay. Okay, and hopefully I, I might have black ink on there. That's okay. We'll go with there. Okay. This was the first thing I knew I was going to do with this, and it's, this is the one thing that I didn't have any already ready. <laughs> any already ready. But you have seen this res recently. This is what I call the tattoo. Um, it is one of the things that I like to do. I really like to do it with the brown and to put it onto a coffee dyed paper. Um, we could go ahead and put it onto, yeah, here we go. We're going to put it, okay, so you want to, can let that one continue to dry. Wow, does that side look better? It does. Hmm. Oh, oops. <laughs> Don't do it on this side. <laughs> you do still get a cool image. <laughs> Let's get that off my glue. Oops! There's your blooper. <laughs> Do not try it that way. Okay? Do it on the wrong side. Even though the wrong side looks really good. And I don't know if you can wait till later. I'll try it another time and I'll let you know someday. Okay. So our, 180, our 128 is up there. So I'm going to put this down here. When I can leave numbers, I like to leave numbers. Okay. Now you can see where, where I got my glue all the way to the edge. It became part of the paper. And that's why I call it a tattoo. Just kind of becomes part of the background, which I think is really cool. Okay, so there you go. We've got our little mushroom on our Edith Holden paper. Okay, and then putting that onto, let's see. Um, it's like, what do I have for the... Let's put that on the inside of... Oh, we already put it on something. Oops. Yeah, that ain't going to work. Blooper, blooper, blooper. 
Yeah, that ended up a mess. Do not try it that way, okay? Don't try it that way. Or that way. But that turned out cool. <laughs> okay, that looks better. But it's still the bottom. Okay, but it's dry now, so let's try it. Let's see if it still sm yep, it still smears when it's dry, you guys. Well, not as not no, maybe not. There we go. So if you let it dry, there you go. That is from the Tim Holtz mushrooms. Um, the, the foam set. I have both. I have the foam set and I have the other one. And I think, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that is the parchment paper, coffee dyed parchment paper um, tattoo. Love it. Then we have with the wax paper, we did the side-by-side -side pocket, making it noisy paper. Love noisy paper. Then we did, we made the little pocket, little bag. It's like a treat bag. It's like a glassine bag. And we made a ready ruffle. So ready ruffle. When, I mean, you can just go ahead and just ruffle and have these um, like this. But by adding the paper, I can, if I'm going paper to paper, I can use any glue that I have. I can use the glue stick to put that onto a page. So um, I think that that is, is pretty awesome. So there's that. Then we have our side-by-side page using the dryer sheet and we added a little pocket to this side so side by side on a dryer sheet then we made we used it used the dryer sheet as a backing piece and of course that almost would have fit it doesn't quite fit but it almost fit And this was my example that I had made so I wouldn't forget how I did it then we have the dryer sheet ruffle so we'll put that over here with the wax paper ruffle and then we have our snow page so dryer sheet this is going to be a tip in so it'll get glued here into the journal probably and then be a tip in so that there will be more to the story behind it. There is a part about the Arctic in my um, the book I'm using for my challenge journal. So let's see. We'll put that there. Okay. So don't forget that we still have the um, the fall collab is still happening. That's every Wednesday. And so check that out at hashtag JNCFall22 and see what everybody's making. You guys, it's the same two pieces of paper and it is crazy amazing what people do and how different and how similar um, some of the things have turned out. So do check that out. Um, again, hashtag J and C fall 22. And also uh, the new mushroom kit that I showed you is on sale through the month, month of September. Um, these are some of the images that you will We'll see, there's, there's pictures, there's antique, um, 
these are using some of the antique things and then making other things you've even got the inside of the mushroom how cool is that so what was your favorite is there something that you saw here that you're going to go ahead and make um let me know and make sure you tag me um when you um do so if you're in the something special stash buster junk journal challenge for september um make sure that you're putting what you're making in the categories so that people are able to um, to look at them and also to get inspiration because we're getting towards the end of the challenge and that's when some people seem to get a little bit stuck and they're actually looking for help and ideas on how to be able to finish the challenge so thank you for that and also our vip is wednesday at one o'clock pacific standard time that is for everyone that finished their challenge journal in august I look forward to seeing the, you there Find something to celebrate every day. Have an amazing day. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye.